West Papua, Indonesia, is home to Asia's largest remaining rainforests. But resource companies are paying as little as $5 a hectare for this ecological paradise through questionable land grabs. Hutan kami ini sudah diambil oleh perusahaan. Terus saya tanyakan izinnya di mana. Ini tanah-tanah adalah saya punya. Indigenous tribes accuse South Korean-run palm oil giants of plundering West Papua for a pittance. The $300 million revenue is pure fantasy. That's not the case at all. 101 East investigates allegations of fraud and human rights abuses in land deals worth billions of dollars. Four thousand kilometers from the Indonesian capital Jakarta, West Papua is as wild as it gets. The province is a rich tapestry of wetlands, savannas, and forests, where indigenous tribes have lived for centuries. Local ranger Lahisa says half of Indonesia's biodiversity is found here. Secara global, mungkin semua orang tahu bahwa ini adalah salah satu paru-paru untuk dunia kita, untuk bumi kita. Saya pikir tempat ini surga karena ketika mereka masuk di hutan sini, ya mereka akan melihat semacam tempat yang mereka tidak pernah bayangkan, tidak pernah mereka bayangkan sebelum itu. But Indonesia has some of the fastest deforestation rates in the world. Lahisa says West Papua's wilderness and hundreds of indigenous tribes are now under threat. Sudah banyak tanah-tanah mereka berpindah tangan ke orang lain, diperjualbelikan, sehingga mereka mulai kehilangan tanah sedikit-sedikit mulai hilang tanah mereka. Kita menginginkan supaya anak-anak kecil di kemudian hari setelah menjadi dewasa tidak hanya mendengarkan hutan Papua melalui cerita atau melalui dongeng. Investigating the issue isn't easy. Soldiers monitor us. Okay. Okay. West Papuan separatists have been fighting to gain independence from Indonesia for 50 years. Foreign observers are rarely granted entry to this restive province, where more than 30 people were killed in clashes with the army last year. But we've gained special access to West Papua's conservation zones. There are military posts like this one across the national park. As we head deep into the heart of West Papua, we see widespread destruction that locals say is fueling their anger. More than a decade ago, Indonesia opened up the region to the resource sector and allowed companies to buy up tribal land. Two companies that benefited from this sell-off are Corindo and Posco International whose major investors are based in South Korea. In a year-long investigation with journalists from Monga Bay and the Gecko Project, 101 East has uncovered evidence which suggests some of these deals were mired in fraud and human rights abuses. Seringkali ada binatang atau burung, tapi sekarang sudah tidak ada lagi. Maka saya berdiri lihat ke sana, Kiri kanan tempat yang dulu sudah tidak ada lagi seperti semula karena sudah tanah kelapa sawit. Linusomba is a leader of the Mandobo tribe. He's showing us their ancestral land. Spanning more than 3,000 hectares, he says their forest was destroyed in 2012 when a POSCO international subsidiary cleared all the trees and planted oil palms without their consent. Look 
Ketika kita membuktikan dengan kebenaran cerita, menurut cerita sejarah dan lain-lain, kepada perusahaan-perusahaan mengakui bahwa inilah mereka, dua orang ini yang mengakui sebagai yang punya tanah adat. Linus told the company there was a long-standing agreement between the Mandobo and their neighbouring tribe, the Marind, to share the land. But these documents show the land deal only had agreement from two Marind elders. Salah satunya adalah Stefanus Mause. Yang kedua adalah Damianus Yone, basik-basik. Ketidakadilan ini membuat masyarakat bahwa mereka sebagai suku Mandobo yang ada di tanah adat ini. Perusahaan datang ini tidak melalui prosedur. This company called PTBIA bought the forest for $5 a hectare with an estimated total land sale of $200,000. While Linus's tribe got nothing, leaked documents show that the company expected to make more than a billion dollars from the timber and plantation. A few months after the deal, Korean giant POSCO International bought PTBIA, retaining its owners as local managers. Saya pegawai negeri, kenapa saya bertanu di belah tanah? Karena tanah, tanah saya tidak diperjualbelikan lagi. Saya harap tanah adat kami dikembalikan. We spoke to both Marind elders who admit to taking the company's money. Lihat dokumen ini. One of the signatories, Damianus Yone Basik Basik, no, no, no. concedes that Linus's forest was included in the deal. Yeah, memang Bapak tanda tangan Bapak Linus cerita juga ya itu itu benar. Ah, dia perjanjian. Basik Basik signed a deal leasing the land to the company for 35 years, after which ownership would be passed on to the Indonesian government. In return, the Marind elder says his tribe would receive cars and housing, but he alleges they received no benefits. Do you feel any guilt given all the land was destroyed? Yeah, Bapak ini juga, Bapak juga menyesal juga. Itu kan sudah namanya sudah penipuan untuk Bapak. Itu Bapak bisa anggap itu penipuan. Mereka punya itu juga perjanjian-perjanjian itu ya. Sudah lupa begitu. Sekarang mana? Tidak ada, tidak diperhatikan ke pemilik. POSCO International denied the deal was fraudulent. They claim their project provided adequate compensation and was approved by all levels of government. Back in the forest, Linus Omba prays to his ancestors, asking for help. But he's also resorted to more confrontational measures. Pemalangan di kantor, divisi semua. Saya palang itu. Perusahaan kelapa sawit masuk itu selalu kami masyarakat adat dihadapi dengan teknik korun. Maka kami tidak rasa nyaman. This amateur footage at a roadblock near POSCO International's plantation shows armed forces firing a rifle in a confrontation with Linus and other tribespeople. He says such incidents can become even more hostile. Saya, saya bilang, tidak usah gertak-gertak saya, saya bilang. Kalau berani tembak saya, saya bilang, lalu saya maju. Saya maju ke laras. Tembak, Pak. Dia tarik prekel kedua kali. Boom! Bunyi di telinga sini. Jadi sampai lima kali. Magasen pun juga. Eh, longsong juga. Ada waktu itu kami lapor ke polsek terdekat. POSCO International argue all dealings with local communities predated their acquisition of the land and in a statement deny all allegations of fraud and misconduct. The company claims local managers provided sufficient consultation to help tribes determine ownership and compensation under Indonesian customary law. But a 2009 legal document leaked to 101 East states the same local managers were trying to acquire land without verifying the owners. POSCO International claims this so-called insufficiency was resolved in 2011. 
but meeting notes provided by the company reveal they were still resolving tribal land boundaries on Linus's block in 2016, more than three years after the forest was destroyed. Other indigenous communities accuse Corindo, West Papua's biggest palm oil producer, of taking their land in similar disputes. Augustinus Tomba's tribe and five other clans claim they were never told their forest had been sold in 2010. Oh, ternyata ini person sudah masuk. Person sudah masuk garap di wilayah kita. Itu dusun aku lihat kita begitu. Kami ti keras. Tetapi dari pihak perusahaan itu yang bilang di sini kan atas nama baru dijual. Villagers say they were not employed to work on the project and Corindo gave affected families just $100 each, one-seventh of what they demanded. Masyarakat sini tidak tolak bantuan datang. Masyarakat tidak terima. Kalau perasaan dia niat untuk bantu, masyarakat terima. Tapi jangan bantu baru minta tempat lagi, minta hutang lagi. Jadi masyarakat tidak mau. Corindo's chief sustainability officer, Huang Yor Peck, denies all allegations the company has violated people's rights. There, there are conflicts, there are, you know, misunderstandings, but all in all, I think uh, if you were to take a survey with uh, the residents there, they would be highly favorable for our, for our development. We generate 11,500 direct employment. Uh, we built about 500 kilometers of road. Uh, the, uh, we provide electricity to some residents. And also we have uh, you know, provided the, what, one full service hospital, 19 medical clinics, 20 schools, 66 mosques and churches. Uh, we are doing a lot of development. Local store owner Petrus Kingo worked with Corindo after one of the company's subsidiaries approached him in 2014 with promises of development for local tribes. Bapa dorang kalau tahan hutan begini bagaimana bapa dorang perkembangan ke depan? Kalau bapa dorang mau hidup yang baik, mau sejahtera, perusahaan mau rencana buka lahan bapa dorang berikan supaya perusahaan buka. Bapa Doran juga bisa samakan dengan Indonesia lain. Impressed with Corindo's sales pitch, Petrus persuaded his tribe and ten other clans to sell their forest for eight dollars a hectare. They also asked for houses, electricity, and school scholarships, but he claims Corindo avoided putting the deal on paper and instead gave them seventy thousand dollars, among other gifts. Kami disuruh ke sini, ke sana, ke sini, ke sana, terus semua dikasih dengan uang. Penginapannya yang dibayar dengan mahal. Wah, ini hotel-hotel mewah. Terus ke diskotik-diskotik. Jadi semua dia bilang, sudah nanti baru saya fotokopi kasih. Cuma janji, janji, janji. Without a written contract, the clans rejected the deal. But Petrus says the company obtained government approvals to build the plantation anyway by misrepresenting tribal discussions as an agreement. Cuma dia kumpulkan masyarakat, buat dokumentasi, daftar absen hadir itu, setelah itu baru dia bawa naik. Supaya proses izin ini bisa keluar namanya AGU. No, no such attack has took place. We have been fair, we have been transparent, we have been open, and we have uh, conducted the proper negotiations per the uh, uh, laws and regulations of Indonesian government. It's not true that uh, we did not go through the proper channels. But Corindo's conduct has been the subject of a two-year probe by the Forest Stewardship Council, or FSC, a global certification body for sustainable timber. After legal threats from the company, the certification body only published a redacted summary of its investigation, 
which recommended Corindo be stripped of its FSC membership. The redacted report also found Corindo violated the human rights of West Papuans and destroyed 30,000 hectares of high conservation value forest. In Papua, it's almost impossible not to choose primary forest. We did convert about 60,000 hectares of uh, forest into farm. And obviously there was a uh, you know, destruction of uh, environmental values. In excerpts from the uncensored report seen by 101 East, the authors found Corindo benefited from close military ties to obtain economic advantage. They estimate West Papuan tribes lost $300 million in these timber deals and said Corindo acquired land for as little as $4 per hectare. They are grossly misleading uh, accusations. In spite of the contents of those reports, uh, FSC uh, decided to maintain uh, membership with us. Uh, it was their decision, and uh, uh, we're happy with their decision. In a written response to the redacted report, Corindo recognised there may have been some shortcomings in some of our operations. W what are these shortcomings? Of course there could be improvements, and uh, specifically, I guess we could build more schools for the better, you know, if I just to pop in my head. Uh, yes, I think uh, of all things in life, I think we could have done more, we could have done better. Based on industry data, 101 East estimates Corindo exported wood worth more than $320 million from their projects, a figure the company denies. But it's clear tribes got mega sums for their land. Is that fair compensation for the transfer of their land and resources to Corindo? The market uh, dictates the price, not us. In a West Papuan town, we meet Nicholas Mahuze, a tribesman who says he worked with Corindo and POSCO International to acquire forests. Nicholas confirms in deals he witnessed, some tribes were only offered $5 a hectare. Do you think Corindo is a fair, honest negotiator? Perjanjian yang kemudian bukan hari ini dia janji besoknya tidak. Jadi tidak memperhatikan hak-hak dasar. Nicholas says a driving force in many tribal negotiations was Johannes Gluber Gebsi, who is from one of West Papua's most powerful political families. In 2007, when Gebzi was an elected local government leader, he promised these land deals would deliver incredible prosperity. Photos obtained by 101 East show Gebzi in a hotel with a Corindo director, allegedly signing concession documents. Government maps show that on one day alone, Gebzi granted permits covering 160,000 hectares of rainforest to companies that were later sold to Corindo and POSCO International. Itu bagian bupati bagian dari pada perjanjian karena semua perjanjian itu harus ditandatangani oleh kepala daerah. Jadi tidak boleh kemudian bupati diam. On this remote property, Johannes Gluber Gebzi is currently under house arrest for unrelated corruption offences. We contact him by phone. Gebzi denies his local government approved the permits. He blames national politicians who were in power at the time of the deals. What connects POSCO International and Corindo to the contentious land deals is this Korean businessman, Kim Nam Koo, who appears in many of the photos and documents we've obtained. Kim Nam Koo started plantation companies, obtained lucrative licenses through Gebzi and other politicians then sold them to both companies for tens of millions of dollars. Nicholas Mahuzi says he received a $300 monthly stipend from Kim Nam Ku to help facilitate land deals for him. Karena awal awal persoalan semua dari dampak-dampak yang ditimbulkan akibat dia bongkar hutan, dia bikin fabrik, 
Nah itu yang dia sumber masalah. Eh, dia langsung datang, datang yang diikuti dengan SKPD terkait dari Merauke, Badan Investasi dan Promosi, kemudian Kepala Distrik langsung turun ke masyarakat. In such meetings, 101 East has confirmed Kim Nam Ku paid as little as $5 a hectare to tribes for their forest. This document shows he was the director of PTBIA, the company that brokered the controversial land deal which led to the destruction of Linus Omba's forest. Damianus Yone Basik Basik says he met Kim Nam Ku during the negotiations and in a traditional ceremony, they split this pig skull to mark that a deal had been done. Kim Nam Ku kan dia hadir waktu kita bikin ritual. Yang dia ada bawa pulang kepala apa, dagu babi dengan kepala babi kita tahan. Itu surat kontrak. And it was Kim Nam Ku who then signed a contract to sell his company, PTBIA, to POSCO International. The price, $10 million. With help from the Korea Center for Investigative Journalism, we call Kim Nam Ku. This was not the only deal Kim Nam Koo was brokering. 101 East has financial statements which show in 2013 a Corindo shell company in Singapore made a payment of nearly $22 million to an unnamed consultant described as an expert in getting plantation rights. We asked Kim Nam Koo about the payment. So we did. And in a written statement, Corindo executives confirmed that the $22 million consultant is Kim Nam Koo. They claimed the payment gave them ownership of his company and almost 40,000 hectares of West Papuan rainforest. Corindo says that translates to around $560 a hectare for the land. Kim Nam Koo pocketed at least $30 million from land sales to the palm oil giants. But West Papuan tribes say they got very little or nothing at all. He refuses to discuss these deals. <laughs> Corindo's $22 million payment raises questions, as plantation permits have little or no cost in Indonesia. I would want to know whether a company looked into... Bruce Searby, a former prosecutor at the US Department of Justice, is an expert on financial crime. Um, what kind of expert is paid that much money uh, at a market rate? And what kinds of things besides expertise are being provided. Do you think the authorities should be investigating this case? Law enforcement ought to be taking a hard look at cases in the palm oil sector where there are huge unexplained payments to consultants that are possible signs of corruption. There certainly are lots of bribery cases where the term consultancy is used as a euphemism for bribe payments uh, through an intermediary or a bag man for corrupt public officials. The Indonesian government declined to comment. Corindo denies any involvement in bribery or any wrongdoing in this matter. After logging 760 square kilometres, POSCO International and Corindo say they have stopped large-scale deforestation in West Papua for now. Both companies have lost palm oil deals with major traders and brands like Nestle. Some indigenous tribes say they feel robbed. Corindo makes no apologies. Some rights groups say Corindo should return customary lands, resolve tribal conflicts, and fairly compensate local communities for lost livelihoods and damaged ecosystems. Will Corindo do that? Uh, will Americans return their land to Apaches and Cherokees? 
the we acquired uh, those lands through legal means and uh, with the uh, uh, agreement with the both international government and uh, residents and we made proper compensation with which they are happy yes there are those who are not happy with it but that's not the view of the whole people <laughs> In a bid to protect native forests, Indonesia's current government banned new palm oil licences for three years. But that ends in 2021. A change in political power could leave West Papua's isolated communities open to a new wave of unscrupulous investors. The opaque system that's led to past land conflicts and corruption remains broken. With vast profits to be made, how long can West Papua's pristine wilderness survive?